I don't think I will ever look at an onion the same way again. After reading The Supper of the Lamb, A Culinary Reflection by Robert Ferrer Capon. And maybe after you hear this today, you won't either. As nearly as possible now, try to look at it as if you have never seen an onion before. Try, in other words, to meet it on its own terms, not to dictate yours to it. You are convinced, of course, that you know what an onion is. You think, perhaps, that it is a brownish yellow vegetable, basically spherical in shape, composed of fundamentally similar layers. All such prejudices should be abandoned. It is what it is, and your work here is to find it out. For a start, therefore, notice that your onion has two ends, a lower, now marked only by the blackish gray spot from which the root filaments descended into the earth, and an upper which terminates, unless your onions are over the hill or have begun to sprout because you store them under a leaky sink trap, in a withered peak of onion paper. Note once again what you have discovered. An onion is not a sphere in repose. It is a linear thing, a bloom of vectors thrusting upward from base to tip. Stand your onion, therefore, root end down upon the board and see it as a paradigm of life that it is, as one member of the vast living gravity-defying troop that across the face of the earth moves light and airward as long as the world lasts. Only now have you the perspective needed to enter the onion itself. Begin with the outermost layers of paper or onion skin, but be careful. In the ordinary processes of cooking, the outer skin of an onion is removed by peeling away the immediately underlying layers of flesh with it. It is a legitimate shortcut. The working cook cannot afford the time it takes to loosen only the paper. Here, however, it is not time that matters, but the onion. Work gently, then, lifting the skin with the point of your knife so as not to cut or puncture the flesh beneath. It is harder than you may have thought. Old onion skin gives up easily, but the new ones can be stubborn. Look now at the fall of striped and flaked skin before you. It is dry. It is, all things considered, one of the driest things in the world. Not dusty dry like potatoes, but smoothly and thinly dry, suggesting not accidental desiccation, not the withering due to age or external circumstance, but a fresh and essential dryness. Dryness as an achievement, not as a failure. Elegant dryness, deliberately deliberate dryness. More than that, the onion paper is, like the onion itself, directional and vectored and ribbed. It will oddly split as easily across its striations as with them its grain has been reduced by dryness to a merely visual quality. Best of all, though, is it is of two colors. The outside a brownish yellow of no particular brightness, but the inside is soft, a burnished coppery gold, ribbed especially near the upper end with an exquisiteness only hinted at on the outside. Accordingly, when you have removed all the paper, turn the fragments inside up on the board. They are elegant company. For with their understated display of wealth, they bring to you one of the oldest and most secret things in the world, the sight of what no, which no one has... <laughs> this is getting to me, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> for with their understated display of wealth, they bring to you one of the oldest and most secret things of this world, the sight of what, you, what no one but you has ever seen, this quiet gold and the subtle flattened sheen of greenish yellow white onion that now stands exposed our virgin land. Like the incredible fit of twin almonds in a shell, they present themselves to you as the animals to Adam, as nameless till, by, till seen by man to be met, known, and christened into the city of being. They come as deputies of all the hiddenness of the world, of all the silent competencies endlessly at work, deep down things. And they come to you as to you as their priest and voice for ablation by your heart's astonishment at their great glory. Only now are you ready for the first cut. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? And you know what? He continues. He goes on about the onion and it just... I, like I said, I will never look at an onion the same way again. So anyway, um, I am just so happy because my friend Becca recommended that I read this book after she saw my um, clip about 
books that inspired me to want to cook better. Um, so anyway, if you have any more books to share with me, um, I'm excited to read them. Thanks again. Take care.